All right, it looks like we are officially live and on the air, only six minutes behind our normal time. That's good. Doing pretty good, pretty good. So today, uh, Steve, we're going to be talking about uh, one of my favorite things and one of yours as well, screen capture videos and how you can use those to uh, make some great content and why. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. How often, how often do you use screen capture videos? I use them every day, pretty much. Pretty much every day, yeah, yeah. Uh, minimally a couple times a week, but... Yeah, I do. I, I must say probably pretty much every day. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Going to be a lot of exciting stuff. No talk of uh, presidential debates or uh, COVID or anything else today. Just uh, Just screen capture videos. Stay out of those arenas. So if you came here to hear Steve and I talk about the debates, well... One, you made a mistake trying to think that anyway, but you're definitely going to be disappointed. But you're not going to be disappointed if you're here to hear about video, because we're going to have some fun with that. So, Steve, without wasting any more time, are we ready to get this show on the road? You, you don't want to share it out anywhere? Oh, yeah, let's share it out, baby. Let's share it out. Sorry, guys, we're going to get started as soon as we share it out, because we want the world, we want the world to know what we're doing. I've noticed and we get a lot more views when you share it out to all your that, I, I'm Shocking, isn't it? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> amazing how that works sometimes. So let's do that. So news, we need to have, flash. you know what we need to do, Steve? <laughs> you know what we need what? to do is we need to have um, uh, Facebook sharing music. So as we're sharing it to Facebook, do, do, uh, we do, have like a music do, that plays do, specifically do, for that. Do, 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 that's do, not the music. Do, do, no, do, that's not do, it. Do, do, no, 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 no. No, 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 I need another song. Do, do, need a longer song. Do, do, oh, what, do, do, what about this is the best song ever oh, not made that. in the world. Oh, Lord. This I have nightmares about that song. This is the best song ever made in the world. I don't know if this is sharing right. Uh, I got to go check now because when I tried to share it to my pages, it did not show a video preview at all. Hmm. So I don't know if that worked or not. So now I'm going to have to check and see. Check, check the other one. Make sure it worked. No, not, oh, oh, now I'm goofing up. Now I'm goofing up. Oh, no, making mistakes. Ah, ah, no, that's not it either. Ah, ah. You see oh, here. Andy, you've got a fine head of hair. Let's go back to this here. This is going slow. Facebook is slow today. So let me make sure that the actual share, because I did not see a preview of our video, so I want to make sure it actually shows the video in here. Oh, it does. It is. It's good. It's good. We've lost all of our audience, but it's good. Yeah, All nobody's time we watching now. Nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody watches. Really nobody watches. Anyway. Nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. All right. Let's uh, share it out to a couple of groups. These groups love it. That's the, the fun thing is putting it out to some of these groups that aren't expecting it. It's like yeah. nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. No. And, uh, oh, Andrew Fogel and John. I, I You know, John, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> He's been on here forever, and I always read his name, but I've never tried to say it before. Endless, I've known him, I've quote unquote That's known good. him for yeah. years through Facebook, but I don't know how to say his name. Oh. Endless, and now it's not in front of me, so I can't read it. So I know it. Isn't that sad? Yeah. That's kind of the the state of the world these days. Is you know a lot of people, but when you've never had to actually say their name, you're like, wait a minute, I don't even know how to say that. So, John, I apologize, but I'm glad that you commented. I haven't seen the comment yet, but I see that you did comment or maybe liked. I'm not sure which, but uh, we'll find out. And and for those of you watching these two madmen share things on, on Facebook as if that's entertainment or something, uh, the show hasn't mine. actually started yet. This is our little pre, pre-show pre ritual before we start the show where we kind of goof around and you get to see what we're doing behind the scenes here. Uh, but in just a second, we will start the actual show. Uh, in fact, Adio. Steve, I was watching a, a behind-the-scenes sort of thing like this the other day with um, – some some guys that I always follow, and uh, it's in the retro computing genre, which, yes, mm-hmm. I, I am that exciting that I actually listen to podcasts and watch videos about ancient co- technology. Um, they spent uh, like an hour before their show actually started. No, 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 move your head this way. No, 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 your head's not in the right spot. No, your microphone's covering your face. Oh, now I can't hear you. 
for like an hour. It was kind of interesting. It was in the background. I wasn't actively watching it, but it was just kind oh. of funny in the background there. So, all right, we've got everything shared out now. Are we ready to get Good. this actual show started now? Amen. So that everybody can be happy with us. Because I know people happy. are going, these guys are mental losers. patients. And, uh, no, I wouldn't say losers. That's not nice. Okay. That's not nice at all. Mental, mental patients, maybe. Mental patients. But. That's more positive. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely much more positive. So, in any case, let's get this show on the road. Okay. And ready in five, four, three. On today's episode of Video Marketing Madness, we're going to discuss one of my favorite topics, and that is screen capture videos and how you can use them to make content all the time. I use them every day. And today's episode is made possible by our good friends at Email Spike. You know, Steve, yesterday I was driving to uh, a meeting and I got a phone call from one of my uh, one of my customers, subscribers, and uh -huh. they were saying, "Hey, how did you put that video in the actual email?" So they were opening their email on their iPhone, and this, they told me it was their iPhone, and they're looking at the email, and the video was playing. Well, the answer is. Email spike. Now they thought it was magic. They thought I was a magician, which technically mm -hmm. I kind of am, but not mm -hmm. uh, not in that way. It's m the magic mm -hmm. of software, and that software mm -hmm. comes from email spike. And email spike allows you to put a video in your actual email. And what's great about this is not every email reading software will be able to show videos. And what's great about email spike is it gives you a backup. So you put your video in there, and if their email reader software allows for videos, it plays a video right in the email. And if their 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 uh, email software doesn't, it gives them a backup, which can be like an animated GIF, it could be an image. You decide what you want that backup to be. Then they click on that animated GIF and go to the actual video, and they can still watch it. Uh, people used to pay just for that feature alone on a lot of other softwares, but now that's the backup feature. The main feature is putting the actual video in there. And by the way, that's not all. Oh no, that's not all. Email Spike also allows you to put countdown timers in your emails. So Dang. you can literally, if you've got a sale that's ending, you can have a countdown timer in that email to get that scarcity or that urgency going so that people make a purchase. Now between those two things, you're not even gonna be spending a fortune on this. It's actually very, very reasonable. How reasonable? Well, you gotta go find out. Head on over to raythevideoguide.com slash email spike, all one word, and you'll be able to see my review of the product. You'll be able to learn more and pick it up for a very reasonable price over at email spike. So check it out, raythevideoguide.com slash email spike. And with that, let's hit our funky music and get this started. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at, even if he's a little fat. He's filled with video expertise, and has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. And it's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray, the video guy, and I'm Steve Sleeper. Go yes. VMM is the home page. We feed out all, to all the podcasters, podcatchers, excuse me. Catchers, and, catchers. Uh, we, Stitcher. We, Stitcher's we the, whole, the big Stitcher, one. Stitcher. 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 And we've got a whole list of them. Uh, and, of course, Apple of Podcasts, Google Apple. Play, all those wonderful places where you can pick us up. And, of course, on YouTube. We, uh, we put all of this madness on YouTube as well, so you can get it there. Lots of different places. Go VMM.com. Our Facebook link is there, and we put this on yes, Facebook. Yes. It starts with Facebook. Yes, indeed. It all started with Facebook. With Go VMM, you get it all. Yeah. In a world, in a world where video marketing madness is everywhere, that's my uh, Ron Lafontaine in a uh, world, imitation there. The late Ron Lafontaine. Yes, very late. It was like fifteen years ago now. Was it really? <laughs> uh, it seems like it was yesterday. Jeez. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't fifteen, but it seems like I think it was. It was quite a while ago. But uh, oh, people are going, "Who the heck is that?" Well, he's the guy that was in the movies all the time. In a world. In a world. In a world. Well, in we're a in a world, but we're in a different world. We're in a marketing world. Forget those movies. Forget the, uh, I don't, 
Is there are there even any movies out now? I don't even know if any movies are out. I know uh, the oh. movie theaters here. I said I wasn't going to talk about that thing, but uh, I guess I'm kind of roundabout talking about it now. Um, I know that one of the movie theaters here opened back up, and they were just playing like Star Wars and Indiana Jones and stuff because they, there was no new content. But uh, are they are they putting out movies again? I don't even know. Well, all the trailers. Now that you mention it, all the trailers I've seen have been for either Apple TV or yeah. Amazon or right, right. Netflix or, or yeah. Disney Plus yeah. or whatever. Disney Plus. Like or Mulan whatever. was yeah. supposed to be a big release, and now it's just mm-hmm. right on Disney Plus and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So right, what right. not. It's uh, going to be interesting. interesting to see what things look like. And when I say things, everything looks like after we reach herd immunity, you know? Yeah. Well, it would be interesting be different. to see if movie yeah. theaters survive at all, you yeah. know, after all this. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Although, it is fun to go to a movie. It I've is. I've been to one in a while, but it's, it's fun to it's go to a movie. It's an event. It's an event. I highly recommend you go to escape rooms instead, but that's uh, yeah. that's self-serving. Boy, Especially I if you're one. in the the Loganville area of Georgia, you can come down to Escape Plan Georgia. So I saw one review from a gal on Escape Plan Georgia, and she said, I'm amazed that it's actually a good escape room in little <laughs> Loganville. And she was kind of, I mean, she was into it. She was talking about, I forget the terms, but like, you know, the Grand Master and the, uh, you know, da-da-da and this and all these kind of terms were, you know, uh, and and uh, she uh, had good things to say about it. She was good. We do it all, uh, man. We do it all. She obviously knew her escape rooms. Excellent. So, well, good. She's a step ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, though, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. But uh, it'll be good to get out to movies again. So hopefully they're coming back. Uh, but speaking of coming back, not that it ever went anywhere, so don't call it a comeback. It's been here for years, and that is uh, screen capture videos. Now, if you don't know what a screen capture video is, like I said, it's Steve said it best. He does it every day, pretty much, or at least a few times a week, and I do it pretty much every day. Uh, I haven't done one today, but I know that I will be. I've already got one planned. So what is a screen capture video? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a video where you record your own screen. Some people call them screencasts or screen recordings. Um, I just call them screen capture just because why not? I'm, I'm that crazy. That's, uh, that's, that's how crazy I am. I, I don't mess around. That's how crazy I am. Um, but no, screen capture videos are a great way to do a lot of different types of content. So for instance, what I use it for quite often is if I'm testing a software. So if somebody sends me a software that does you know, animated videos. Well, I'm going to do a screen capture video of me using that software to make whatever I'm making. And uh, it works very well because people can see what you're doing on the screen. And you've got a lot of different options with it, too. So, for instance, if you're using a a software, and there's many of these softwares that do screen captures, uh, probably the two most popular ones are Camtasia and ScreenFlow. Um, I, I would be be willing to bet that between the two, they probably have you know ninety percent of the market share at this point. Uh, with Camtasia probably having the lion's share of that, just because uh, ScreenFlow is Mac only. But it seems uh, everybody I know on Mac uses it, so that, that's a lot of people. But between those two softwares, they probably have the vast majority of the uh, of the the uh, market share on that. There are some free ones too, by the way. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic is is one that's free. I haven't really played with it very much but it is a a free screen capture software. And there are some others out there as well that do a pretty good job. Uh, But the idea is you record what you're doing so that you can make a video out of it. And we often do this for testing software, like I said, demonstrating software. Uh, We do it for training. Training is a huge part of this. So if I've got, let's say I'm I'm gonna do a training on how um, how to set up a YouTube channel. Well, I literally record my screen and I go to YouTube and I set everything up and I go into Photoshop and I create my graphics and I go back and I import the graphics and I do all of that in a video that then gets shared in however we're going to share it, usually through uh, you know an, an Everlesson uh, membership site or something like that, but or put it on YouTube for people to see or Facebook. But we go and we capture these videos specifically for training people on how to do something, and it's really the best way to do it. Um, you know, in the past, I've I've seen things in the past where people literally put a camera behind them and shoot their screen, uh, which, by the way. Not a horrendous option these days because 
with our flat screen monitors and, and whatnot, it actually can work okay. Uh, in the old days, people would do it with CRT TVs, and it would you know you'd see the screen rolling and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't really a viable option. But nowadays, it's a it's a you know it's an okay option. But definitely want to stick with the screen capture software if you can. And the good thing about the screen capture software is typically if it's a good one, you'll be able to record your voice and the screen capture on two different. Uh, two different layers of the timeline, so you can manipulate either one of those without affecting the other. And usually, with most of the softwares, you can use your webcam to capture yourself as well. So if you want to have you on the screen while you're doing these, you can do that. And a lot of people do that. I see that in the uh, another huge area for screen capture, and that's when people are doing uh, video games. You know, if you ever see like the Twitch streams and all that, they're they're capturing their video game screen and they're showing themselves on camera, typically they're using something um, like uh, you know a live streaming software for that, uh, whether it's OBS or something else. But again, OBS, when you're doing that, is essentially a screen capture software on top of that too. So different kind, it's, it's more for live streaming, but it does the same types of things. Uh, some other great uses for screen capture would be if you're putting together a presentation in PowerPoint. So you create your PowerPoint video, you can then record your screen. Now, uh, when I say PowerPoint, I mean PowerPoint or Keynote or even Google Slides, any of those three. Uh, no offense to them by saying PowerPoint, but it's just kind of the word that people use. Um, what's great about that is, you know, if you're using Keynote, if you're using PowerPoint, you can export those as a video. Now, the problem with that is when it does, it's just going to be, you know, a standard. So slide one is five seconds long, has a transition. The next slide is five seconds long, transition five seconds long. So now you're in a situation where you've only got those five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever it happens to be that you've got it set to. When you do a screen capture, you're doing it real time. So you would pop up your PowerPoint presentation or your keynote presentation, and you would talk into your microphone and record that and hit the button when you're done to transition to the next one. So if slide one has to be a minute long and slide two is three seconds long, you can do that without having to put any more work into it afterwards because it's going to be recording what you're actually doing. Much, much better uh, than trying to retime that. And believe me, I've had to do videos where I retime exported PowerPoint you know, videos and I've got to go in and I've got to lengthen this one and shorten this one and you know, it's not easy. It's not that fun. But if you can do the screen capture video with that, you can do it very, very quickly and easily, go through the presentation, and then the only thing you'll have to edit are any mistakes. Now, some other great uses for that would be if you're going to be um, showing people websites, okay? If you're going to be doing evaluations of different things, we use this, for instance, I use screen capture to do evaluations of YouTube channels. So if, if I'm going to send an evaluation to company X showing them why their YouTube channel doesn't work or what's wrong on their YouTube channel, I'm going to do that with a screen capture. I'm going to capture the screen. I'm going to go through their channel. I'm going to show them all the different things that are right or wrong with their YouTube channel, put it together into a presentation, into a video, and then be able to send that out. So that's another great use for that. If you're doing websites, same type of thing. You can go through that website, show them exactly what's wrong. Social media, same thing. You can go into Facebook and go, now if you notice here, you're, you're only posting once every two weeks and nobody's really looking at it, but look at this competition here over here and then show the other one and say, oh, they're posting every day and they're getting all this activity. And you know, it's a great way to be able to pull in and show people exactly what you're seeing. And Steve, you use these all the time. So how do you use them? Uh, reporting. It's wonderful for reporting. With my GMB ranking system, yep. what I do is uh, before I start working with them, I use a software called Local Falcon, and it will you know, have a dot for where their yes. office is, and then a bunch of dots for 5-mile, 10-mile radius, however far out you want to take it. And it shows its rank um, in, in uh, the Google My Business as it relates to uh, what page they're on. Specifically, <clears throat> one through three is page one, is the three pack, and so on and so forth. And so I, uh, I, I do that. I run a fairly tight grid. I show them where they're at. Typically, they're just number one around the neighborhood they're in. And after three months, I run another one. And after another three months, I run another one. And Local Falcon saves them all. 
and then I just go to the local Falcon software, bring up all those maps, have them ready to go, and I, I hit Camtasia and say, okay, here's where you were uh, on March 24th. I just did one yesterday. And you can see the grid is, is a tight grid, but, you know, I can point out some of the geography as a reference point. Here's where you were at three months, and we're starting to see a little movement. And here at six months, dang, you know, we're really getting a lot of movement. So that is, I, I knew a guy at Gannett who was kind of high up the newspaper chain that said, he who has the best maps wins. <laughs> and so uh, this, this is really a way to show them the results that I'm getting. And as a side note, this GMB ranking system, which is actually John Curry's GMB Genius, which I have adapted and added some things on, works every time. I am amazed. Uh, so that, it's good for reporting. The other thing is um, I'm like the world's west, worst typist. And uh, if it's going to be anything more than a short email, I just open up a PowerPoint slide, put my copy points in there, and hit Camtasia. And nice. uh, I, I, um, I, I don't even use... Now, Camtasia, it will... Uh, you can take the PowerPoint, and uh, it will record directly from the PowerPoint like you were talking about, and you can narrate it, and it has all the animations yep. and stuff, and you can control the timing. I don't even do that. I just take a slide, hit Camtasia, and, and you see all the copy points there, and then I talk through them. Some guys even just use a notepad, you know, yeah. but a DOS document with it in there. But then w what I can do is talk them through all the... Uh, all, all the things that I wanted to cover in an email. So instead of it being this big, long email, it's a video. And people pay more attention to videos. And ve very simple kind of stuff. Back in the days when I was actually the tech guy for a startup company that I was working for, I was primarily the sales guy, but they were all idiots, so I had to do all the <laughs> tech work. <laughs> idiots as it related to computers. I, that's how I showed them how to fix things. You know, I'd say, okay, you go here, you do this, you do that. Whenever you can draw a picture for somebody, it's it's better, and it's it's a lot better when it's a video. It, it, yep. And it's kind of similar, that, that, that application is kind of similar to evaluating a YouTube channel or website or demo software. But you can show people how to fix things, and that's that's good for if you're a geek and you go out and fix things for people. Uh, if, if it's a situation where it's real simple and they can do it themselves, uh, that, that's a big advantage. So that's what yeah. I do. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know that I do it every day. Probably most of the time it's three or four times a week, though. Yeah. And, and you know, you brought up kind of a, another point, and this is something else that they're used for all the time, and that, that's troubleshooting. So, for instance, you've got a software and it's not working properly and you need to contact support. A lot of times they'll say, send That's us right. a, a Loom link. And now, if you don't know what Loom is, Loom is a, uh, a light screen capture software that's built you can build into your browser and whatnot and so you click on loom in fact i've got it right here on top of my screen i can click on loom at any time and it just records a quick video of your screen with your microphone so that you can say okay guys you know i uh i've been trying to use the software and here's what's happening to it you know we're having issues with it and this is what it does and then they can actually see what it is and that makes a big big difference oh, and helps huge out a lot difference so you see the, the 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 thing is when you lots of times when you file a support ticket you're trying to guess at what the jargon is and yep. you're you're trying to guess at describing it so they'll understand it and you're not an expert Whereas if you just make a Loom video, you can show them what's going yep. on. You can get and it doesn't have to be Loom. That's just one of the ones that a lot of people use nowadays. Uh, I, I, it used to I, be, I, uh, what, was the, what was the one that uh, from the Camtasia guys that they used to have oh, that was the same? Uh, uh, begin with a J. Jing. 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 So if you ever had Jing, Loom is very, very similar to Jing. And for whatever reason, the Camtasia guys killed Jing. Probably, you know, probably cost them too much money to run it where they weren't really making anything off of doing it. But... That was a good little software. I like that for quick things like that. But now Loom does that, and it uh, does a pretty good job. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to yeah. do that. And I know many, many businesses use that and say, hey, send us a Loom link on whatever the problem is, and then that way they can see it. And I do that all the time. Um, the other thing that I use it for is for troubleshooting um, software that I'm working with. So, for instance, like, um, you know, we promote a lot of software. Well, they send us the software beforehand, and here this is going to shock everybody. 
believe it or not, many softwares before they're released, they have lots of problems. <laughs> what? Shocking, I know, because they never have problems when they're released. I know that. Yeah. yeah but uh, right. no, they, they, we run into issues all the time, and I can send people bugs. Uh, I don't know if they appreciate it because I don't work for them, but but I will still send. Hey guys, I was using your software, and when you click this, look what happens. And it happens every single time, you know. So I'll send people that, and they always thank me. I don't know if they really want to thank me, or if they want to, you know, shoot me. But um, they do. They do usually say thank you for doing that. So that's another thing I use it for is to send people issues that I see with software uh, before it comes out when I get to uh, kind of beta test it and whatnot. Um, now, you know, as far as sharing it, you know, as far as getting somebody a link, if it's mm-hmm. not real sensitive, you know, information, I'll upload it to YouTube and make yeah, it unlisted yeah. and send them that. Yep. If it's fairly sensitive information, I'll use I'll send them a Dropbox link. Yep. Do, do, you, yeah. do you use anything else? Or yeah, I, I I'll typically use Wasabi for that. I'll drop it in Wasabi. If it's a if it's a small enough file, I'll just put it directly into like Skype or or uh, you know Facebook Messenger or what have you, because uh, mm-hmm. you can do that. But they limit it. I forget. I think Skype is. Hmm, I know Facebook Messenger has to be smaller than 25 megs, which is pretty small for a, a video of any length. And I think Skype might be 100 or something, but I'm not even sure. Uh, but usually that's what I'll do is I'll just drop the, the video there uh, just because I don't want to have to spend the, you know, the, the time putting it on YouTube and doing all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, yeah, that, but that, that, it's, a, it's that all good so stuff. Awesome. But it, it, it's just, you know, these things, these, these screen capture videos just have so many uses. They're so useful. And, you know, they're not that expensive. I, I mean, uh, Camtasia is a little expensive. I think it's like normally like, what, two ninety nine or something like that. Something um, like that, yeah. But it, it's essentially a one-time fee. Yes, they'll do updates in a couple of years, and you probably have to pay another 100 bucks or whatever. And they do specials once in a while. I think we actually sold Camtasia uh, as a special offer for like 100 or $150 back Maybe it was at Christmas time or something like that. Uh, so oh, they do wow. run specials every once in a while. Um, I use uh, I use ScreenFlow, which actually is only ninety nine dollars. Um, but I will say yeah. this: they tend to update it a lot more often, and, and usually the you know the big updates are paid updates. So uh, Camtasia, you know, you get Camtasia, it's probably going to be good for a couple of years. Uh, with ScreenFlow, you know, six months later they're going to have some major update or so. That they're going to try to charge you for. And Steve is practicing his uh, Reiki on, ten, on the screen here if you're watching. Ten, ten years is my version. Wow. Uh, I bought ten it in years 2010. Old. It still does what I want it to do. And I just got an email. They're not going to support it anymore. So what that means <laughs> Gee, shocking. is if I, if I have to reinstall my OS or I get a new computer or something, I'm going to have to buy a new version of Camtasia new version. because that file won't exist out there. Anymore. Well, you probably should you should get a new version and and I'll tell you why Steve because uh, these things have come a long way because it's not just screen capture that these do. And this is what what gets exciting about these is you know a lot of people uh, they're like, "Oh, I don't have a video editing program. Uh, oh, you know, I don't have Final Cut. I don't have Adobe Premiere. I don't have whatever." Well, when you've got Camtasia or you've got ScreenFlow, not only do you have a screen capture tool, but they are pretty good video editing systems as well. You can do most of your editing in there. Now, I'll tell you, my, my typical way that I do screen capture videos is I go into ScreenFlow, I record what I'm going to record, I export that out, I go into Final Cut Pro, and I bring it in there and put it with everything else. But that's usually because I'm going to have uh, segments that I've recorded of myself talking. I might have... Um, you know, special opens and all that kind of stuff and, and things like that. And, and it's just easier for me to bring it all into Final Cut and do that. But with ScreenFlow and with Camtasia, you can do all of that inside of the programs themselves. So uh, like I said, I don't use Camtasia very often at all. In fact, it's probably been years since I've touched it. But in ScreenFlow, um, if it's not going to be a major production that I'm putting together, I'll do the screen capture. Maybe I'll use my webcam and record an intro. I'll drop the intro in there, put a transition between the two, put the put a graphic on there or what have you, add music, and export it out. So I've got a full video. When I bring it into Final Cut, it's because I'm using maybe I'm using like a virtual set and I'm gonna have the, the screen capture in a in a window and then I'm gonna put, you know, animated 3D text and all that. And ScreenFlow and Camtasia do animated text as well. So you can do different types of animated texts inside of those. But of course, you know, when you get into Adobe Premiere, when you get into Final Cut, there's a whole another level of things that you can really do. Um, 
and that's why I want to do it that way, you know, just because it's I'm going to be able to bring in the stuff that I've already done. And oftentimes I'm taking something that I made in Final Cut for another project, copying it and bringing it in. And so it's much easier to just bring in the screen capture as a piece of that video and then copy my animated logo or copy this and put it in there, copy my lower third graphics that are already done and I can put together a, a, you know, a nice high-end video very quickly. Now, I will say this. Most of the screen captures that I do are not going to be you know, high-end videos. They're, they're, they're meant to be quick little videos. Uh, some of the demos that I do are a little more post-produced. Uh, some of the trainings that we do are going to be post-produced a little bit, but a lot of the stuff where it's just a quick you know, check this out sort of deal, not going to be post-produced very well. We just get in, get it done, and, and export it out. So, um, But those softwares will do some pretty darn cool stuff as far as animated texts, lower thirds, uh, backgrounds, music. You can do all of that inside of there. You don't, you don't have to just capture your screen. You can actually fully edit inside there. And I've done full products in Camtasia and full products in ScreenFlow that had no screen captures in them. You know, because you can do your video editing in there. So it's it, it's a little bit of both. It's like having two for one. Is it going to be the top-end editor you can get? Nope. But the top-end editor isn't going to have screen capture. So there you go. You lose out on that with those anyway. So it's good to have, uh, you know, that as an option. And, and if you're not going to be doing high-end editing, you might want to just go with Camtasia or ScreenFlow anyway. Have your screen capture and have your editing all in one place and you're done. And both of them do things like... Green screen. So if you're shooting on a green screen, you've got green screening options in there. Uh, it does the animated text in the lower thirds. It, it can have music in there. It can have backgrounds. All of that stuff, some of it built in, you know, into the program itself. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Uh, anything that you could pick up on something like Video Hive, where you're downloading videos or backgrounds or whatever, most of that stuff you're going to be able to just bring in and use inside of there to make some really, really nice videos. So it's a... Uh, it's a very capable way to build videos, even if you don't have a traditional video editing program like HitFilm or Premiere or Final Cut or, or what have you. So very, very cool stuff. And, uh, I don't know, like I said, I do it every day. Love it. Use it all yeah. the time. In fact, very uh, later today I'll be doing uh, – I've got at least one that I'll be doing later today and adding that in. And, you know, we've done one every – at least one every single day this week. It's a, it's a non-stop use program. So highly recommend that you learn to do it. Highly recommend that you, you use these to create content because the biggest fear that most people have is getting on camera. And if you think about this, if you wanted to shoot a video, so for instance, we want to shoot, you know, we want to do a video for here at the escape room, okay? In order to do that, we're going to have to get cameras out. We're going to have to get lights out. We're going to have to put me or somebody else in front of the camera. We're going to have to have somebody behind the camera to make sure it's shot right. We're going to have to record that. We're going to have to get some B-roll footage. We're going to have to bring that into the into the computer. We're going to have to edit it all together, create the final production, add the music, put it out there. And now we've got a beautiful video, but it took a lot of effort from multiple people. On the flip side of that, if you're doing something where you just need to have quick content, you can throw this up. Open up your, your screen capture software, record whatever you're going to record, boom, done, send it out. And it's just going to allow you to do a lot more content a lot quicker. And that doesn't mean you don't do the other stuff. You know, you, you always need content. So work on the bigger videos, but in between, do these smaller videos. Do these screen capture videos of different things showing stuff off. Um, and it's not just screen captures either. You know, do live videos. You really want to mix things up and get a lot of different types of businesses or uh, uh, different types of videos for whatever it is you're trying to do. So if you've got some, if you've got a software, you can do a nicely produced video or a video sales letter, but you can also do your screen capture videos, you can do your live videos behind the scenes and really start to build a lot of content without having to constantly do these big productions. And that's really where these types of things shine is the ability to create content that you can post to YouTube, post to Facebook, send to social media without having to spend days putting it together. And, you know, that's that's what makes these things great. When I do a training that is on ScreenFlow, if doing the actual training, doing the actual project takes 10 minutes, then that video is done in 10 minutes. There's not a whole lot to do. Yeah, maybe I might add an animated logo or put some music on or whatever. So for a couple of minutes extra on there. But for the most part, if it, if it takes you 10 minutes to do something and you recorded it, you're done. 
You don't have to spend days post-producing and, and pulling out cameras and everything else. So it's well, very, very easy to make a lot of great content. And one thing you just kind of mentioned in passing, though, uh, great idea, sales letters. I mean, you just put uh, build a PowerPoint, do your animations, yep. all that kind of stuff, and uh, and just record it. And uh, at least with Camtasia, which is what I'm familiar with, it integrates with PowerPoint. So you've got the full screen on there with all the animations, and you can narrate yep. it at the same time and control the time. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people don't think about that. A lot of times, if you don't know what a video sales letter is, um, essentially it's a sales video, but uh, traditionally the video sales letter that we think of when, when somebody says that is those sales videos you may have seen where most of the time they're very simple. There might be a black screen with some white text on it, and the text changes with a voiceover, or vice versa. It could be a white screen with black text while somebody talks, and usually it mirrors what's on the page so that instead of people having to read your whole page, they follow along with this video. They hear it. They see it, and you know it, it, it allows you to create a better sales position using that. Uh, and it's done, like Steve said, with PowerPoint. You literally go into PowerPoint, make a slide, put the text on it. They can get fancy. Most of the ones you think of are actually very, very simple. You record that, and boom, you're done. And there are softwares that do that for you, but if you don't have those, you can do that directly with PowerPoint, Keynote, uh, Google Pages, whatever software you have. Get out there, create your slides that, again, are gonna mirror the information on your page, do a voiceover, and do it to that PowerPoint, screen capture it, and boom, you've got a video sales letter. And uh, you know, hopefully you're gonna get more sales by doing that. But overall, you're gonna be able to build a lot more content just by doing these screen capture videos. So again, video sales letters, screen captures for training purposes, for uh, doing you know videos showing problems so if you got a problem with something and you need to send it to somebody to show them, you can do that with it. You can use it to demonstrate or review a product or service. You can do it as a way to show people uh, through an evaluation how their website or their YouTube channel or their social media is. All of these things can be done. They can be done quickly. They can be done easily. And they're actually enjoyable to watch because you're actually seeing what's going on. It's not uh, you know, just some boring video again. It's, it's something that people can follow along with. And so that's why we really love them. And again, the softwares that we use, Camtasia, ScreenFlow, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, again, is a free one. And there's other ones that do it as well. Even QuickTime itself, if, you, if you've used the actual QuickTime software, has a built-in screen recording function now as well. Uh, the other thing to mention, however... And I believe Camtasia does this as well, so I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but I know ScreenFlow does, is it'll record your phone as well. So if you want to do a video showing people how to do something on their smartphone, you can record that screen. So literally, for instance, when I do, when I do ScreenFlow, if I have my phone hooked up to it, and uh, right now the way they do it is you actually plug it in. So you actually plug it in so you don't have to worry about connections and things like that. And it's going to record your phone. It can still record you on the webcam, and it's going to record your desktop at the same time. So you could do all three at the same time and get some cool stuff out of that. And then, of course, when you edit, you know, if you don't need the desktop, you just get rid of it, turn it off, and, and now we don't see it. We just see the phone. But that's another great thing that you can do, um, which really helps, especially if you've got an app that you want to share with people. Maybe you want to review an app. You want to show people an app. Maybe you've got uh, – maybe you created an app and you want to be able to show it off. This is how you can do that is using a software like this. So screen capture software is one of my favorite softwares, one thing that I use all the time and one that everybody should really have for the variety of purposes that we talked about. Steve, any final words on these screen capture tools? It's easy to do. There are so many applications. You know, complicated videos I have, Ray, make them for me. And yet, screen capture videos, I make them almost daily. Yep, absolutely. And Steve, do you know what you can do with those videos once you've created them? Well, I heard there's a software whereby you can embed those videos into emails that you're sending. Well, you must be reading my mind because that's absolutely true. You can create these screen capture videos or any kind yes. of video 
and put it in your emails. That's right. So now somebody opens up your email and maybe your email says, uh, hey, John, I was working on this particular software and I noticed there was a problem. See my video. And right in that email, they can watch that video. They don't have to go to a YouTube. They don't have to go to your website. They're watching it right inside your email. Don't think it's possible? Well, guess what? It absolutely is. At least now it is. And you can do it with a product called Email Spike. And Email Spike gives you that ability very simply, very easily. It even does things like creates animated GIFs as a backup, allows you to put an image as a backup, and even gives you a whole bunch of other little tools in there that you can check out. And how can you check it out? Well, by heading on over to raythevideoguide.com slash email spike, where you can learn how to embed videos into your emails, as well as add things such as timers to your email. So it really does enhance your emails, turns them into much better sales tools. So again, check it out at raythevideoguy.com slash email spike. And with that, we're going to spike the ball and get out of here today, Steve. So uh, any last words before we cut everybody off of our stream? Boom. There it is. Boom. Boom, there it is. All right. Well, with that, speaking of boom, we're going to drop the boom and drop the audio for our theme song here, and then we will see you guys next week. He's Ray the Video Guy. Yeah, I'm Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at. Even if he's a little fat, he's filled with video expertise. He has so much knowledge that you need. YouTube Ninja Tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy.